Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this terrific Tuesday. I hope you're having a good day so far. Good morning. Uh, here in my little corner of Canada, it is cold and rainy again, although rain is very, very important <laughs> for our plants and our flowers and to get spring going. Um, ugh, I'm just, I'm not personally a big fan of the cold. I don't know about you, but I like to be warm and cozy. So I hope that uh, maybe it's a little more sunny where you are. Maybe if you like the rain, um, I hope you're enjoying it. So um, let's get started right away with uh, Tuesday's Kids Learning Club. Welcome to those that are joining. Happy Tuesday. I think that we have finally stumped our very, very bright Kids Learning Club group. Uh, you guys have been getting your riddles every single day, and I think this time I've actually stumped you. <laughs> so for yesterday's riddle, um, we had one that went a little like this. What begins with E, ends with an E, but only holds one letter? And I mentioned yesterday, this is a good one for people that like to play with words. Um, or and have fun with words and letters. The answer for that riddle is an envelope. The word envelope ends, starts with an E, ends with a silent E, envelope, and it holds letters. Get it? A letter, not like the letter A, but a letter you would write. Ah, tricky, tricky. <laughs> okay, we had some really great guesses. Um, I believe, um, uh, Brayden and Spencer guessed I, which is, is right, it ends and starts with an E, um, but our eyes don't hold letters, they may see letters. I like that kind of thinking, but they don't physically hold them. So anyway, good job with that. Uh, today's riddle um, uh, may also be another stumper, who knows? But I think we have some clever viewers that have been getting them every single day, so this is great. Today's riddle is, how much dirt is in a hole six feet wide and five feet deep? Hmm, how much dirt is in a hole six feet wide and five feet deep? Okay, think about that one. Try to stump someone at home, see if they can get it too. After our riddles, we like to do our fun fact of the day. Uh, so today's fun fact uh, required a little bit more research from me. We're gonna we're gonna learn some uh, some big words here today. Okay, big sciency words. Um, so our main fact of the day is that there are some sharks that need to stay in motion. They need to keep moving, or else they won't be able to breathe, okay? Now it's not all sharks, and this is what I learned when I was researching this really fun fact. So some sharks use what we call a buccal pumping system, and that means that they're able to pump water in their mouths and through their gills. So how do most fish, including sharks, breathe? They have these little uh, slits on the side. Pretend I'm a fish for a moment. Okay, they have these little slits on the side of their face that kind of open and close while they're swimming and that's what's helping them breathe, okay? And they'll move their mouths too. Mm -hmm. So you see fishies doing that. But those little slits are called gills, okay? Um, sharks have a fun system that pushes the water forcefully. So if they're still, um, the water will be pushed in their mouth and through their gills. That's called a buccal pumping system. Okay, now, some sharks will use um, a ram ventilation system with that mouth buccal system, which is that they breathe when they're moving. So that, that mouth forcing of water stops working. And then when they're swimming, uh, the movement of the water in their mouth is what's helping them breathe, okay? Because there's oxygen in the water going into their mouths. But some animals don't have the one system, so they have to keep swimming in order to keep breathing. Ugh, sounds a little stressful. So those specific sharks are great white sharks and whale sharks, okay? So that's our fun fact. 
There are some sharks, great white sharks and whale sharks, that if they don't stop, if they stop swimming, they stop breathing, okay? That, that is quite the life, <laughs> okay? Interesting. Uh, now we're going to uh, take a little break. I think that we have uh, maybe gotten our brains really, really warmed up with this uh, funny, fascinating riddle and all these crazy science words with our fact of the day. Let's take a break and use our imagination. And I'm going to share a fun poem with you today um, by a classic poet. He's a little bit, um, uh, he's not with us anymore. Uh, so he, he lived a long, long time ago and his name is Robert Louis Stevenson. And this particular poem was written in 1913. Oh my goodness, that was the last millennium the last century. That's a long time ago. Okay. I don't even think like your, your parents are even younger. Okay. I know it's crazy to think your parents are younger than Robert Louis Stevenson. Okay. I know you think they're old, <laughs> but they're younger than Robert Louis Stevenson. But this is a beautiful poem about using your imagination and uh, building with things that you have at home. So for today, Let's just take a little relaxing break. Get comfy wherever you are, in your couch or in a nice chair or on the floor with a nice blanket. And I just want you to use your imagination and imagine what uh, this poet is building in his home. And I think that that's something that a lot of us are finding that we're doing right now, right? Using what we have at home to play and use our imagination. Okay, so let's get started. This poem is called Block city. What are you able to build with your blocks? Castles and palaces, temples and docks. Rain may keep raining and others go roam, but I can be happy and building at home. Let the sofa be mountains, the carpet be sea. There I'll establish a city for me, a kirk and a mill and a palace beside and a harbor as well where my vessels may ride. Great is the palace with pillar and wall, a sort of a tower on the top of it all, and steps coming down in an orderly way to where my toy vessels lie safe in the bay. So a vessel can be like a boat, okay? This one is sailing and that one is moored. Hark to the song of the sailors aboard and see on the steps of my palace the kings coming and going with presents and things now i have now i have done with it down let it go all in a moment the town is laid low block upon block lying scattered and free what is there left of my town by the sea yet as i saw it i see it again the kirk and the palace the ships and the men and as long as I live and wherever I may be, I'll always remember my town by the sea. I wonder what you imagined when you were listening to that poem. I'll read it just one more time because we have some pretty big words in this poem. Um, one of them that maybe we don't use as much today is vessel, okay? And that usually is just something that contains something. In this case, we're talking about boats, okay? Um, to be moored, when a boat is moored, it means it's, it's uh, resting, so it's not sailing. And at the end, I want to see if you can listen, when does he tumble down all his blocks? That's usually one of the most fun parts about building with blocks or making a fort uh, with your couch cushions or something, right? Is when you just boop, push it all down and start all over again. Let's see if you can listen when he does that. Okay. All right. So just one more time. Just stay nice and snugly. And imagine, maybe you'll get some ideas for your own uh, fort or block building. Hi, Tanya. <laughs> Just wanted to say hi to my cousin. Uh, hello, Tanya. Hola. All right. Here we go. The poem is called Block City by Robert Louis Stevenson. What are you able to build with your blocks, castles and palaces, temples and docks? Rain may keep raining and others go roam, but I can be happy and building at home. 
Let the sofa be mountains, the carpet be sea. There I'll establish a city for me, a kirk and a mill and a palace beside, and a harbor as well where my vessels may ride. Great is the palace with pillar and wall, a sort of a tower on the top of it all, and steps coming down in an orderly way to where my toy vessels lie safe in the bay. This one is sailing and that one is moored. Hark to the song of the sailors aboard and see on the steps of my palace the kings coming and going with presents and things. Now I have done with it, down let it go. All in a moment the town is laid low, block upon block lying scattered and free. What is there left of my town by the sea? Yet as I saw it, I see it again, the kirk and the palace, the ships and the men. And as long as I live and wherever I may be, I'll always remember my town by the sea. Ah, I love that poem. It's a little bit long, but it's uh, really, um, really helps us use our imagination. Okay, if you decide to build something fun with blocks or with your couch cushions, um, I wouldn't mind seeing a picture because I always need ideas. Okay, my little guys like to build forts, but I'm usually the one building them. <laughs> so, because they're still little. So, pass on your fort ideas. Alrighty, for today's activity challenge, we share an activity challenge with you after our poems each day. Um, that is always very, very fun and involves some learning. Um, our challenge for today is called Spring Math Flowers. And I always share the link with you at the end of our video. So if you want uh, to see better, or you need a reminder of what we do, I'll send it uh, to you at the bottom. So here's an example of our Spring Math Flowers. This is partly woo, an end result, okay, of what it would be. So you get the idea of what we're doing. And yes, this is not seven petals, there's two, okay? Uh, this is what happened when my son decided to, to leave the scene because his sister went to go play, okay? So this will probably happen at home too, <laughs> okay? So here we go. How do you do this? Um, we are going to cut out some circles for the middle of our flowers, whatever color you want. I've got yellow. Uh, maybe mom and dad or grandma and grandpa, whoever's with you at home, can write down some numbers that maybe you're working on. Um, maybe you need some practice with your really, really big numbers. Maybe there's some numbers that you find confusing. Maybe you're mixing up, I don't know, five and eight or something. Uh, so maybe mom and dad can write those down. And then we're gonna cut up some petals from different colors. I'm struggling today with my camera. So cut up some petals in different colors. And then you can paste them on your flowers, okay? and try to have the number of petals match the number inside, okay? So what worked today with my very young kids, I tried the, with them this morning, they're um, almost four and almost three, is I was mentioning that the flowers only want a certain number of petals, that's what makes them really happy, okay? It was hard for them to understand at first, why? Why do we only want four? So I said, this flower is only happy with four petals, okay? He will be very sad if you give him too many. Maybe that'll work with you, maybe not, but there's an idea, okay? I'd love to see your spring math flowers. Um, you see too, maybe you want some bigger paper. Okay, I just used a regular page. Um, if you are using bigger numbers, your petals might get crowded or you make smaller petals, okay? You're pretty bright. I'm sure you guys will, will figure that out, okay? If you do do the activity, I'd love to see a picture, okay? Thank you so much. So yesterday, um, I mentioned that in our second third week of Kids Learning Club, um, we're trying to do a different theme each day and yesterday at the end. So for the final activity, we're trying to do something with a theme at the end. Um, yesterday we did music and movement. We did a very simple clap along to the song Bingo, B-I-N-G-O. Um, and Mondays will be our music and movement Mondays. Today, it's Tongue Twister Tuesday, okay? So I'm going to share with you a tongue twister. Now, what is a tongue twister? It is something you say that gets your tongue all twisted up because maybe the words sound really similar. They might have different uh, similar sounds in them that trip you up, okay? And it can be really, really funny. The faster you go, it's just a hoot, 
okay? People start laughing, trying to say these riddles as fast as possible, as many times as possible. So here, I'll share with you today's, uh, today's little riddle, okay? And I'm gonna say it really, really slowly. If anybody wants to jot it down, I can also write it in the comments for you if you forget. But for now, you can just take a look and um, someone in the room that can read can read it with you. All right, so I'll say it really slowly. Fred fed Ted bread and Ted fed Fred bread. Okay, let's try that one more time nice and slow. Fred fed Ted bread and Ted fed Fred bread. Now, this is a tongue twister because there's a whole lot of ed, ed, ed in the tongue twister, okay? And whenever there's a lot of Fs, that can really trip people up too. So let's see if I can say it faster and I'm very much okay with you laughing at me if I get a little silly, okay? So I'm gonna say it a little faster. Whew, Fred fed Ted bread and Ted fed Fred bread, okay? Fred fed Ted bread and Ted fed Fred bread. Again, Fred fed Ted bread and Ted fed Fred bread. Ooh, I'm doing okay. One more time, a little faster. <gasps> Fred fed Ted bread and Ted fed Fred bread. Hmm, I think I had a lot of Fs at the end there. I don't know if I said that right. Okay, but I hope you're all having some fun saying that at home and you can try to go faster and faster and faster and see who can keep saying the right words um, the fastest, all right? Of course you wanna to try to be clear, okay? The second we start going, <laughs> then we're just being silly, right? Wonderful. So I hope you have fun uh, with our riddles for today, stumping our family. Enjoy your uh, spring math flowers activity challenge. I'd love to see some pictures. And if you build a fort, please take a picture of that or something fun with blocks. Um, and I hope you guys have a good laugh uh, sharing this riddle today, or sorry, this tongue twister today for Tongue Twister Tuesday. I will sh write this down in the comments as well as a link to our Spring Math Flowers Activity Challenge. Okay, have a wonderful Tuesday and I look forward to uh, seeing you again tomorrow. Take care, bye.